And here we go again, another great technology preview of Siebes Visual Technology. My name is Edwin Braun and I'm going to show you our status of our GPU renderer. But before I do this, I need to remind you, you're seeing a, a product that's work in progress. All the controls, the spinners you see in there, they might show up in the final product or not. So keep this in mind when you see this product demonstration. In this video, we are talking about area shadows. Final Render now supports area shadows. In GPU mode, we can now support, like in CPU mode, true area shadows. And we can support them even with point lights, with standard lights of 3D Studio Max. That's a feature not every GPU renderer is able to do. Let me just activate our GPU renderer before we are going to adjust the area shadows. In this video, I'm going to use our Active Shade Frame Buffer. So I'm going to the Active Shade Render dialog, activate our Active Shade Frame Buffer view, and as you can see, we get in real time our um, rendering with ray trace shadows for now. So I'm going to select the light source, and we are going to choose our fire render area shadows. And the great thing here is we use this highly efficient uh, point source. However, we can get nice realistic uh, behavior of the shadows. And for that, I'm going to activate the shadows now. Right now, the mode is uh, turned to disk. And if I increase our area for the shadow calculation, you will see nice smooth uh, shadows based on the distance to the object that casts the shadows. So that's what you expect from area shadows. And the bigger the area is, the blurrier, the smoother the shadows will become. So now I have a really pretty big area where our shadows are cast from. And as you can see, I have already aligned the light source with the object. So we see here really nice area shadows. And the great thing is, with our GPU render, you can adjust the behavior, the area shadows in real time. So you can zoom in there, move around as you would expect it, and you get real time feedback, including reflections, refractions, everything in here. And the same is true if you change, for example, let me just zoom out a little bit more again. If we change, for example, from disk to sphere, you will see a difference in the area shadows. Um, let me just show you here. We have our area that is used to sample the shadows to get them uh, smooth. As you can see, they become much smoother now, even in a shorter distance. And the same is true if we turn it down even to a little point, they become much sharper now. So that's the cool thing. Same is true for rectangle. So finally, you can adjust in real time the uh, dimensions. So now I stretch the rectangle to the left and right. And let's do the same for up and down. And you can see we can really nicely blur our shadow uh, in here. So just to understand how the blurring or the area effect works, we can go close and you will see in real time how the soft shadows work. And you can adjust the soft shadows. And you see, you can really follow in real time while you adjust the spinners how your shadow will turn out. So that's a really cool feature. It's great. It's interactive. It's what you would expect from a GPU render. And the great thing is we do support um, standard lights, which are very flexible and really fast to render. This area shadow support is obviously also possible with true area lights. However, the added feature of using area shadows with, with point lights is really a good benefit we can offer with FireRender for GPU. I hope you enjoyed this little one. Check out our other videos out there and we will s keep on adding more and more bits to our renderer core and I will show you and update you how our progress is.